All right, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance at eastwesthealing.com. Today we're going to be talking about a very controversial topic, and I'm going to be reading to, reading you some information from studies um, about fluoride and fluoridation and fluoride, fluoride of water. Um, you remember going to the dentist when you were a kid? I don't even know if they do this anymore because I go to a holistic dentist. But at the end of getting your teeth clean, they put the styrofoam thing in your mouth, and it'd be just it have tons of gel in it, and the gel is fluoride, and you'd sit there with the suction in your mouth for like 15, 20 minutes, and they were fluoriding your teeth. It's probably the worst, ex one of the worst experiences in my life, and I couldn't stand it because, you know, they did, would you like strawberry or mint or cranberry, and all of them taste like the back of a cow's ass, to be honest with you. So, bad experiences when we were a child. I don't know if they do that today, but if we look at fluoride, there's many, many, many toxic things about it that we don't even realize. The first thing is toxic about it. We get it going to the dentist, but we get it in every liquid and food that you can think of. Now, this actually differs state to state. So do you research the certain states like Michigan that allow fluoridation in the water? Okay. And the certain towns in certain states that don't allow it. Okay. So do you research to figure it out? Because you might be saying, well, I'm not going to eat fluoride. I'm going to, you know, be fluoride free. But you might be getting, for instance, Fruit Loops for your kids. Fruit Loops are actually produced in Michigan. So the water they use to produce the Fruit Loops actually have a lot of fluoride in it. And there's research by a lot of different people. Some of the high, some of the foods that have the highest amount of fluoride in them, one of them was actually Fruit Loops, and the other one is fruit juices, right? And a lot of kids drink fruit juices, which beside the fact of having fluoride in them, they're just sugar water, which is another topic in itself. So if you're putting filtration systems in your house, because you want to eliminate fluoride, which it's really hard to eliminate. You've got to make sure your filters have KDF in them, which is a zinc-copper compound to eliminate the, KD, um, the uh, fluoride. Um, so if you're trying to eliminate it, but you're eating foods and drinking liquids that are basically from conventional markets or from states that allow fluoridation, you're getting the fluoridation okay, in the water and in the food sources. The actual limit allowed in food sources is one part per million. There's been research to show, for instance, like I talked about, Fruit Loops has three parts per million, and most fruit juices have four to five parts per million um, in the actual juice. So you're getting way more than the recommended amount, okay? And there's been a lot of research to show that increased fluoridation in the body, whether it's on the teeth or from ingesting it, can cause chalky white substance on the teeth, can cause the, the teeth to chip as you get older. And the funny thing is recently... The front of my teeth here is starting to chip a little, so I have to go get them fixed. I got a lot of fluoride when I was a kid. Um, as well, there's been a high incidence of bone fractures and hip fractures because they showed that bone that rebuilds under the presence of fluoride actually develops almost like a crystallized um, bone versus a nice solid bone. Um, so there's been a higher incidence of hip fractures, higher incidence of kidney disease, higher incidence of cancers, and things like that. So... I'm going to read you some stuff about fluoride that's pretty pretty interesting, okay? There was a study done in the Mayo Clinic in the 1980s, and they showed that um, there was an increase in bone mineral density, okay, in, but more importantly in, in the lower extremities um, from fluoride. And this was done through the Mayo Clinic, but also through, it was the clinical director of the National Osteoporosis Foundation, Okay, he said that the bone quality formed under the influence of fluoride is not normal. It gets incorporated into crystals and changes the crystal structure and stimulation production at different kinds of bones. So when you have the fluoride, it, it basically disrupts the mineralization of bone. Okay. Another study in the 1990s by Jennifer Luke, she was out of the university, um, from a university in England. She showed that fluoride affects the penile gland in the brain. It's a small gland that, you know, you hear people talk about higher consciousness and all that affects the penal gland. But on an earthly sense, the penal gland releases um, hormone melatonin, which helps us sleep wake, wake cycles. Um, and also, it's a hormone, okay? And she showed that um, fluoride, actually the primary gland or primary organ in the body where fluoride actually was being absorbed was actually in the penal gland. And she showed that the body basically accumulated up to 21,000 parts per million in the penile gland. And she actually showed through research that this was correlated with early onset of puberty, increased cell damage um, caused by free radicals, 
as well as altered sleep weight cycles. Okay, and if we look at our society today, we have early onset of um, puberty and tons of people with altered sleep weight cycles. Okay, um, some other interesting things about fluoride. Do you know fluoride used in fluoridation is not even approved by the FDA and it is basically considered an unapproved drug? How friggin' scary is that? There was a scientist, an EPA scientist, okay, um, back in 2000 that testified before the U.S. Senate, okay, that cited numerous studies, and he said that when relatively toxic levels of lead, fluoride, and arsenic were compared, fluoride is slightly less toxic than arsenic and more toxic than lead. The federal maximum contaminant level, which is the M, the, uh, I'm sorry, the MEL, for lead is 15 parts per billion. The EPA recommended for arsenic is 5. The maximum contaminant level of fluoride is 4,000. That's quite mind-blowing, if you ask me. Okay. Some other interesting statistics about fluoride. Did you know that fluoride, okay, or the chemicals that are used for fluoridation, they're not pharmaceutical grade. Okay. They're actually derived from the waste products of fertilizer manufacturing. I'll say that again. They're actually derived from the waste products of fertilizer manufacturing, which they can contain tons of heavy metals, such as lead and arsenic. Okay? So why are we giving this to our people when it's not even approved, it's an unapproved drug, and it comes from fertilizer manufacturing. It's a waste product, the chemicals they use. Most people are putting this in their mouth, and if they're not, they're getting it in foods, they're getting it in juices, they're getting it in Coke, Pepsi, juices, milks, cereals, um, anything you can think of that you buy off the shelf, unless it's organic, has fluoride in it. And at the same time, even if it is organic, and it's produced in states that allow fluoridation, guess what? You're getting an organic food that has fluoride in it. So do your research. Another interesting thing, and this kind of goes along the topic of mercury, uh, uh, mercury toxicity as well. Dentists cannot give a professional opinion about fluoride. This has to go with the American Dental Association Code of Ethics, okay, Section 20. Dentist non-participation in fluoride promotion is overt neglect of professional responsibility, right? So in several years, some dentists have actually testified against anti-fluoridation. Guess what? They lose their license because they're get going against the Code of Ethics, okay? So we have to ask ourselves questions about are they really looking out for our general health? Are they really looking out for our well-being? And in my opinion is no. They're actually trying to make money. The government, the, the FDA, these, these prescription companies, these medical companies, they're all sleeping in the same bed and have a, having a big, gigantic orgy. Because if, if we're using an unapproved drug that comes from fertilizers that's more toxic than you know, lead and arsenic, and we're giving it to people, and it's causing disease and issues, then why are we giving it to people? Just because it's in a code of ethics and we can't go against it? So the bottom line is off this post, you learned about fluoride. You can go to a website that's www.nofluoride.com. You can also research fluoride on the, on the web. Um, Dr. Um, Kennedy has done tons of research on fluoride, and he's a dentist, and he's actually made it his lifelong mission to um, fight fluoride, fluoridation. Um, so do your research. Find out if your county, if your state, if your town use fluoride. Look where your foods are coming from. And if you're having any of the issues such as hip fractures, any type of brain disease, kidney problems, chalkiness on the teeth, or the white blotches or yellow blotches on the teeth, you're probably getting fluoridation and you don't know it. Okay? So hopefully you've learned something today. If you want to learn more information about our company, feel free to visit our website at eastwesthealing.com. We have tons of free resources, articles, blog, um, and audio programs. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.